The Pi phone sounds great. What is the projected cost? Is there a monthly charge for Starlink access? The devil is in the details. That's a real comment from one of our longtime viewers, and today's video exists because of you. If you've ever wondered whether Elon Musk could actually build a $215 foldable smartphone that wipes out your monthly phone bill forever, this report is for you. We read every comment, every concern about pricing, durability, and hidden fees, and this episode is our answer. In a world where flagship phones now cross $1,000 and carriers keep raising plan rates, the idea of a lifetime free data phone sounds almost too good to be true. But is Elon really preparing to bundle Starlink satellite service directly into the Pi phone fold at zero monthly cost? How would a $215 foldable even compete with devices that cost five times more? And most importantly, can this actually replace your current phone plan in real life, not just on paper? Those are the questions we'll break down in today's investigation. Before we dive in, if you find value in deep dive videos like this, hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell. We're pushing toward 19,975 subscribers, and when we hit it, we'll unlock a special behind-the-scenes breakdown about the Pi Phone Fold secret. Don't miss it. How can a $215 foldable phone compete with today's $1,200 flagships? To evaluate whether a $215 Pi Phone Fold is realistic, we have to break the device down into engineering and supply chain components. Foldables today remain expensive primarily because of hinge complexity, manual assembly, and low manufacturing yields. A typical hinge module for a Samsung or Google Foldable contains between 120 and 170 individual parts and costs roughly $65 to $75 before assembly. Tesla's rumored hinge design, however, uses a single-axis titanium core with fewer than 40 components. And when automated, the production cost drops to the $18 to $22 range. The reduction is not stylistic. It is purely mechanical simplification. The chassis follows the same logic. Tesla already produces high-volume structural aluminum parts using casting systems capable of tolerances under 80 microns. Applying a downsized casting approach to a smartphone frame cuts machining cycles dramatically. Instead of 90 to 110 minutes of CNC processing like most foldable frames require, a single-shot cast frame can reduce the cycle time to under 12 minutes, saving both labor and tooling cost. This alone explains how Tesla can bring the bill of materials under $250. Display cost is the next bottleneck. Current foldable OLED panels cost manufacturers anywhere from $120 to $160 per unit. But Chinese suppliers now offer hybrid OLED panels in the 6.7 to 6.9 inch range at $65 to $75 when purchased at volume above 1 million units. Early supply chain reports suggest Tesla is evaluating a 1,000 to 1,200 nit hybrid OLED option lower than the Galaxy Z Fold lineup, but adequate for outdoor use and significantly cheaper. Performance hardware is also optimized for efficiency rather than peak benchmarks. If Tesla adopts a custom 4 nanometer SoC derived from SpaceX avionics processors, we're looking at roughly 2.5 teraflops of compute, similar to upper mid-range Snapdragon devices. Paired with a 4,800 milliamp hour battery and a simplified thermal layout, the device prioritizes sustained performance for navigation, streaming, and Starlink packet handling instead of high load gaming. Memory and storage are predictable. A 256 gigabyte UFS module, widely used in Tesla vehicles, costs around $11 to $14 at scale. All these factors support the idea that a $215 price point is not marketing hype, but a product of manufacturing efficiency. The real question, however, is the connectivity model. Starlink currently charges between $20 and $70 per month depending on region and service tier. If a phone could cut your monthly bills to zero, what's the first thing you'd say, deal or skip? Comment, deal if you'd take the savings. Comment, skip, 
if you'd stay with your current plan. Share your reason down below. Your input helps us shape better videos. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss an update from Auto Gear Shift. So how could a Pi Phone Fold provide lifetime satellite data without monthly billing? To evaluate whether lifetime Starlink access is technically and financially viable, we need to examine three layers, satellite throughput, per user bandwidth cost, and Tesla's network subsidy strategy. The first layer is capacity. A single Starlink V2 mini satellite delivers roughly 20 to 40 gigabits per second, depending on ground station visibility and regional congestion. The larger V2 satellites, which SpaceX plans to deploy once Starship reaches steady flight cadence, are rated above 80 gigabits per second and can redirect bandwidth dynamically using phased array beam shaping. This is critical because a smartphone behaves very differently from a fixed residential dish. A typical residential Starlink dish draws between 60 and 90 watts and is engineered to sustain high throughput operations like 4K streaming, game downloads, or large software packages. A smartphone antenna, however, operates at under 1 watt for satellite communication. Its transmit power is drastically lower, which reduces achievable throughput but also reduces load on the satellite. Based on internal modeling from telecom analysts, a direct-to-sell smartphone using L-band or modified Starlink frequencies will average somewhere between 8 and 22 megabits per second for downlink and 3 to 8 megabits per second for uplink. That's roughly 10 to 30 percent of the load created by a residential terminal even during peak use. Daily data consumption is the second layer. A typical smartphone running on LTE or 5G consumes 40 to 110 gigabytes per month depending on user habits in North America. But satellite data behaves differently. Users tend to offload high bandwidth tasks to Wi-Fi because of latency and battery consumption. In trials involving low-power satellite links, average usage dropped to 1.4 to 3.6 gigabytes per day. When aggregated across a multi-million user base, the satellite still sees significantly lower load than traditional broadband customers. Now consider scaling. If Tesla sells 10 million Pi Phone Fold units over a five-year cycle, a realistic target given Tesla's installed user base and global demand, those users would collectively add around 40 to 70 petabytes of monthly traffic. On a constellation projected to surpass 5.5 petabits per second of total throughput by 2027, this represents a manageable allocation, especially if Tesla deploys QoS prioritization that limits high bandwidth tasks but maintains consistent baseline connectivity. The third layer is cost. Starlink's marginal cost per gigabyte continues to drop as launch cost decreases. Once Starship achieves full reusability, analysts estimate the per kilogram cost to orbit could fall below $50, reducing the cost of launching a single V2 satellite to under $7 million. Because these satellites can service tens of thousands of concurrent low bandwidth users, the cost per lifetime Pi Phone Fold user becomes extremely low. Tesla can leverage this by prepaying the network lifetime cost inside the phone price, effectively embedding a bulk bandwidth allocation into the hardware margin. And that naturally leads to the next issue. What limitations must the Pi Phone Fold accept to make lifetime Starlink possible? For lifetime Starlink access to function at scale, the Pi Phone Fold must operate within strict technical boundaries. These constraints are not drawbacks. They are engineering decisions required to keep tens of millions of devices stable on a shared satellite network. The first limitation involves data rate ceilings. While Starlink's residential kits can sustain 150 to 220 megabits per second, depending on region, a smartphone-grade antenna integrated into a foldable chassis cannot. Engineers expect the Pi Phone Fold to operate in the 8 to 22 megabit downlink range and 3 to 8 megabit uplink range under ideal conditions. This performance tier is sufficient for navigation, real-time messaging, video calls at 480 to 720p, and compressed media streaming, 
but it will not replace fiber or 5G for large transfers. Latency is another unavoidable constraint. Even though V2 satellites significantly reduce laser link routing time, real-world latency for direct-to-device connections will sit between 40 and 90 milliseconds on average. That places PiPhone Fold users above mid-band 5G but below geostationary satellite systems. For everyday tasks, route planning, news, messaging, voice, this latency is acceptable. For high-precision applications like cloud gaming or multi-gigabyte cloud sync, the phone will automatically prioritize Wi-Fi or terrestrial networks. A third limitation is bandwidth governance. Tesla will enforce adaptive QoS directly at the device level. When the phone detects a Starlink session, it will switch to a satellite efficiency profile that caps real-time video streaming to a lower bitrate, delays background software updates, and compresses non-critical traffic. This allows each user to stay within the projected 1.4 to 3.6 gigabytes of daily satellite usage, preventing spikes that would disrupt regional cells. Instead of restricting access, Tesla shapes traffic so the link remains stable on a network that is shared globally. Battery management becomes the final constraint. Operating a satellite link draws more power than terrestrial networks, typically 200 to 350 milliwatts sustained. To offset this, Tesla will combine a single-cell 4,800 milliamp hour pack with a low-heat 4 nanometer SOC and an optimized voltage regulator tuned for LEO communication. This ensures that even during extended satellite sessions, heat remains within 36 to 42 degrees Celsius, protecting longevity and performance. Now let me ask you, would you trade your current plan for a one-time payment if the real-world speed stays around 10 to 20 megabits? Do you think Elon can scale Starlink fast enough to support millions of phones without congestion? And if lifetime free data becomes reality, what would be the first thing you'd test on the Pi Phone Fold? That's all for today. See you again next time.